Section 6 of Stories for God's Little Ones by Father John Koenig. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Maria Therese. The Blown Around Room That Stephen Stayawake had a blown around room is very easy to see. Here it is early Monday morning. Just glance around his room and see. One shoe is under the bed and upside down. The other shoe is filled with checkers on the window sill. His baseball bat is sticking out the dresser drawer. His baseball glove is tied to the window shade. His story books are scattered here and there and everywhere. His shirt is on the floor. Stephen's room looks as if a twister of wind from the windy North Pole had just passed through. But really it doesn't have to, because a twister every bit as twisty is under the covers, and his name is Stephen Stayawake. It was early Monday morning. Stephen's mother came in to call him for school. She looked around Stephen's room. Then she slowly shook her head. Stephen, she said, you're the most topsy-turvy boy on our block. Then she looked again and added, your room is the most blown-around room I've ever seen. As she bent to pick up Stephen's shirt, she continued, Jesus would never have a blown-around room like this. And that's as true as true can be. Stephen rolled out of bed. He knelt down to say his morning prayers. Stephen's room was blown around, but not Stephen's soul, for the boy who prays is a good long way from having a blown around soul. As Stephen reached for his second shoe, the one all filled with checkers, he could still hear his mother saying, Stephen, you're the most topsy-turvy boy on our block, but would she be able to say it on Tuesday morning? Something tells me maybe not. When Stephen reached the table for breakfast, he knew right away his mother was going to bake. Are you wondering why? Because he saw the canister of flour and the shortening and the pie plate. In Stephen's house, that meant today Mommy bakes. So Stephen wasn't at all surprised when his mother said, Aunt Susie is coming to visit, so I'm going to bake a pie. Stephen even knew it would be a butternut squash pie. Otherwise, what was that big butternut squash doing next to the pie plate? And besides, didn't Aunt Susie like butternut squash pie best of all? On the way to school, Stephen thought of the big butternut squash next to the pie plate, and that made him think of the butternut squash pie, and that made him think of his mother saying, So I'm going to bake a pie. And all Stephen's thinking didn't stop there. Suppose, make believe, he went on thinking, that someone was coming to visit me. Suppose, make believe it was Jesus. That made him think of his storybooks scattered here and there and everywhere, and that made him think of his mother saying, Stephen, you have the most blown around room I've ever seen. And that made him say, So I better see that my room is in order. With Jesus coming, what else could he do? As it turned out, it was lucky he did. That night, Stephen went to his room with a twinkle in his eye. He was thinking of his supposed make believe visit, and a slipper pipper dip, he was kneeling down saying his night prayers. Now, if you don't mind, glance around Stephen's room. Aren't you surprised? So am I. Why, it isn't blown around tonight. Far from it. Everything is in place. His shoes are under the bedroom chair, brushed and ready to start for school. His storybooks are standing like wooden soldiers along the top of his desk. His shirt is draped across the back of his chair. His baseball glove and bat are neatly set in the corner. His checkers are in the checker box. No North Pole twister has passed through his room tonight. Stephen blessed himself and stood up. He turned to look around his room and see that everything was just where it ought to be. And right then it happened. His guardian angel appeared before him, smiling happily at Stephen and holding in his hand a mirror made of gleaming silver. I wish you could have peeked into the angel's mirror. If you could have, you would be talking about it still. For the mirror showed not just people and chairs and walls and lamps as all mirrors do, it showed things that only angels see. No wonder Stephen got excited when the angel said, Look in, Stephen. He held the mirror so Stephen could. Stephen caught his breath and looked. Most wonderful to say, he could see what his guardian angel could see. He could see right inside his own soul. And there on a golden throne, the Lord Jesus sat, surrounded by a soft and radiant light. Between the eyes of Jesus and Stephen ran a bridge, and love kept crossing back and forth. Stephen could have looked till the kitchen faucet ran dry, even longer. 
but soon the angel moved the silver mirror away. With one last happy nod, he and the mirror were gone. Then Stephen sat on the edge of his bed. He folded his arms across his breast and whispered, Lord Jesus, you didn't have to visit me. You were already here. Right then, Stephen made up his mind he would never again let his room become all blown around, because now he knew each time he went into his room, Jesus went with him. So thinking, Stephen slipped into bed. He was one whole boy of happiness. Soon, oh, about as long as a candle sputters or a falling leaf flutters, he fell asleep. On Tuesday morning, his mother came to call him for school. She saw the checkers all packed in the checker box, and she gasped happily. Then she saw the storybooks standing like soldiers, and she gasped more happily still. Then she saw the shoes and the baseball bat, and she gasped so loudly that Stephen awoke. He awoke and he listened, but he didn't hear her say, Stephen, you're the most topsy-turvy boy on our block. Nor, this is the most blown around room I've ever seen nor did he hear it on Wednesday, nor on Thursday, nor Friday, nor till this very day. For Stephen never forgets that Jesus is living within him, and that turned out to be the best cure for the blown around room. And if you and I remember that Jesus lives within us, too, we'll find that's the best cure for many other things. End of The Blown Around Room